I'm Julia Rosa, Professor of Nursing at Capital Community College in Hartford. Graduates from associate degree nursing programs such as ours at Capital are well positioned to continue their education at the baccalaureate level and beyond. Many of our students express an intention to matriculate into a baccalaureate completion program at some future time. The purpose of our discussion today is to explore baccalaureate nursing and perhaps address some issues that students may have wondered about as they considered their educational options. To help us learn more about RN to BSN education, I am pleased to welcome the Chair of the Nursing Department at the University of Hartford, Dr. Mary Jane Williams, and her colleague, Associate Professor Dr. Susan Deal. Although both of our guests today hail from the same university, our discussion about educational continuation will be general in nature. Welcome both. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Mary Jane, sometimes students wonder about the differences between associate degree and baccalaureate <coughs> degree nursing. Can you explain some of these differences, or in other words, the philosophy of baccalaureate education? The baccalaureate <coughs> degree builds on the liberal arts. And it is considered to be a generalist degree that prepares an individual to provide evidence-based care, based on the research, for individuals, families, and populations in a variety of settings and across the lifespan. So it really is, the biggest difference is the building on the liberal arts component which enhances uh, the critical thinking. Mm -hmm. To follow up on that, um, how would you describe the significance of one's continuing their education um, across many planes? Um, the significance to the client, to the individual student or graduate, and to our nursing profession? I'm going to start with, I think, the individual. I, yeah. I think for the individual, it is a rite of passage to have a baccalaureate degree and to feel that they have what the profession considers to be the level of entry to professional nursing. And I think it also allows the individual the opportunity for mobility mm -hmm. into a variety of areas of practice. So it's it, for them, if for the person who is seeking the baccalaureate degree, they feel better about themselves when they reach that level. Uh, for the patient, I, I believe that building on their competencies clinically when they move from the associate degree level mm -hmm. and then adding the theoretical knowledge and, and the research leadership, which are the core components of a baccalaureate program at, for the RN coming in, they become a more um, competent, more um, they, they strive to provide better care for their clients. So the mm -hmm. client benefits mm -hmm. from this added knowledge and from this more global perspective that the nurse brings to the bedside. Mm -hmm. and, and the nursing profession, how do, how do we benefit? Well, the nursing profession struggles yeah. and uh, we have a variety of entry levels. Mm -hmm. But without, we are educating close to 65 percent of all of our nurses in the state of Connecticut at the associate degree level. Mm -hmm. And if these nurses do not move into baccalaureate education, we will not have the skill mix that we need at the bedside, and we will also not have nurses who are prepared to move into master's degrees and doctoral programs. And right now, locally and nationally, we have a issue with capacity in our programs because we do not have enough educators. So for the profession, we need to move this group of qualified nurses to the higher levels of education so that we preserve our profession and that we have people available to educate other nurses. Mm -hmm. It's almost a pipeline It is uh, a pipeline, issue. actually. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. Um, Mary Jane, you've taught in several programs. Um, can you generally describe the typical coursework in a baccalaureate completion program? I, 
Yes, I've taught for many years in the RN to BSN, and one of the things I did is my doctoral research was on what the core competencies were for RNs to BSN and what the programs had to include. Other than the general education requirements mm -hmm. that students are required to take, all of the programs in the state, locally and nationally, build on core competencies related to research, leadership and, and change theory, um, community-based care because most of our programs focus on the acute care setting and leadership, let's see, leader, and research, leadership, mm -hmm. community-based care, I'm missing one. Uh -huh. It'll um, come to you It'll probably. come to me. Yes. But what we do is our programs all teach the similar uh, competencies and the content. What's different is the names of the courses, uh -huh. the way the courses are taught but everybody has a responsibility to make sure that the graduating uh, student has this basic knowledge. Uh -huh. I see. I'm sure you have the same, like, uh, the same accrediting body, so your, your curriculum needs to address similar. Most of the baccalaureate programs are now accredited by the American College of Nursing mm -hmm. through the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education. They have just revised their competencies, so we now have a little bit uh, of a different uh, emphasis. They're stressing more informatics, they're stressing mm -hmm. uh, uh, policy and regulations mm -hmm. because what they're finding is that those core components, they weren't missing but they weren't emphasized. So along with the, it was assessment, along with assessment, mm -hmm. research, community health, th we're going to be adding into our leadership courses the policy that they need, the regulations that they need mm -hmm. to guide their practice, the scope of practice and the standard of practice issues. Mm -hmm. But if you were to look at the state of Connecticut and look at every single baccalaureate program that prepares RNs, you would see that the courses, although having a different title, emphasize the same content mm -hmm. across the lifespan and emphasize bringing in the community strand, which is not emphasized at the associate degree That's level. That's correct, yes, yeah. Uh -huh. And what you've described too, I think, um, parallels the uh, diversity in our society, that our curriculum is meeting the needs of a society that's increasingly diverse and exploding in technology and uh, very um, uh, beholding to outcomes that are measurable, that are uh, fiscally responsible and so on. So I, I, I understand what you've said very well. Most of our students do not directly matriculate into a BSN program after graduation. They wait. Um, what preparatory coursework would you advise a student to complete during that time between enrollment? I would like to say that we all require similar coursework. Mm -hmm. and there are some common courses that everybody needs. Um, one of them would be statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, most people will now have to have uh, computer literacy. Mm -hmm. However, every university has different general education requirements. Most commonly, people have to take courses in the social sciences, they have to take courses in the humanities, they have to take courses that deal with different cultures or a language, mm -hmm. and then they have some electives that they have to take. Um, but that varies from institution mm -hmm. to institutions. Many of the baccalaureate institutions will transfer in um, a, a good number of courses that are taken prior to coming into the program mm -hmm. as long as the student meets their residency requirement. Mm -hmm. And most of the institutions in Connecticut have between a 30 credit and a 45 credit residency requirement. I would advocate mm -hmm. that students who think they're going to move on look at the programs that they might be moving into mm -hmm. and then seek out some career counseling so that they make sure that they're taking the right courses, that they're guided correctly, yes. and that they, they will be then ready to move right into the program that they want to move into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do have counseling available at all the schools in Connecticut. People are more than willing to sit down and to do uh, program evaluations to help mm -hmm. uh, nurses move on. Mm -hmm. Can, can you just explain to our students what you mean by residency requirement? Universities require that students complete a certain number of credits 
on site at the university or through distance learning from that specific university mm -hmm. in order to have the degree come from that university. Yes. And uh, many of the state system require 45 hours of residency, but some of the private institutions do a 30-hour mm -hmm. residency. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, nursing students at Capital Community College are accustomed to a large lecture hall environment for most of their nursing classes. Mm -hmm. Can you describe the milieu of a typical classroom uh, at the baccalaureate level and um, how that might differ from what our students are accustomed to? Well, um, first of all, I think I, some of the courses that we were talking about were courses we would like to see in between, because I agree with yes. you, I don't think everybody rushes right back no. into baccalaureate education. So those may be larger classes, the liberal arts, uh, psychology 101, or mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things. But once you get into the BSN part, the classes generally become smaller mm -hmm. and more uh, give, and, give and take, mm -hmm. as opposed to being a student and hearing the knowledge right. and and taking tests. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's uh, definitely one of those where you establish relationships maybe mm -hmm. more because there are fewer people to do that. Mm -hmm. I think the scary part is is that you may have 13 to 20 students yeah. and that makes you pretty visible and I think that makes yeah. students sometimes uncomfortable coming from large lecture halls you know yes. where they're so that takes a little getting used to the individual attention, yes. I think. Yes. Um, but in general, I think people mm -hmm. appreciate mm -hmm. having the smaller classrooms. Yes. And most of the programs in Connecticut have mm -hmm. much smaller cl classrooms. Mm -hmm. Almost a at seminar that level. type of mm -hmm. environment. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned tests. This is a very um, you know, uh, stressful concept in our program because yeah. that, that is how we measure outcomes through mm -hmm. testing. How, how do you measure success in your program? How, how do you grade your students, so to speak? Um, well, testing is definitely one way that we mm -hmm. evaluate certain amounts of content. But I think what Mary Jane was describing is the hallmarks of the BSN in the public health and the leadership are more about uh, affect, mm -hmm. your, our affect, mm -hmm. how we learn about how we values, how we learn about implementing all the things we learned in nursing school in a different way. Uh -huh. And so there's more and more of the outcomes I think are written mm -hmm. and uh, papers mm -hmm. and presenting in mm -hmm. front of people. A good mm -hmm. way of our outcomes is how people take a body of knowledge and express it to other mm -hmm. people because that's what we would want someone to do yes. in as you look at a professional degree. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned uh, community again. I would like to go back to that. Students uh, in your programs already are registered nurses. Yeah. They have their licenses. Yeah. Um, how how uh, do you um, provide, what op clinical opportunities are provided in your programs for, uh, for baccalaureate completion? Well, I know that Mary Jane can speak to many more programs than I can in Connecticut, but I think in RN to BSM programs, mm -hmm. we're very sensitive to the mm -hmm. fact that you are already a nurse, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't want to repeat things that y you've already accomplished as, as a student. So I think we take our time to look for opportunities that are a little broader, in particular community health. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think a lot of the ADN nurses are bedside in institutions, mm -hmm. and so we look out to the community. Uh, Project Horizon at the University of Hartford uh, takes our students into homeless shelters and, and different mm -hmm. schools, different venues, so that they're able to use those advanced assessment skills, the mm -hmm. leadership to take what we know at the bedside out into the community. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll find that true of most, most programs that are specifically targeted to the adult mm -hmm. nurse who's already a nurse and looking to put this professional degree on top of her license. Sue and, and Mary Jane, from your teaching experiences in uh, BSN completion programs, 
How would you describe um, typical academic strengths of associate de degree graduates? And then conversely, what have you observed to be some of their challenges in, in the classroom and in the clinical community setting? Mm -hmm. I think the strengths that the associate degree nurse brings, <clears throat> I mentioned the clinical competence because mm -hmm. most of them have worked mm -hmm. and by, by developing their clinical competence they've also developed their ability to assess and their ability to organize and their time management skills. Mm -hmm. Things that you worry about when they're first walking out the door, within a year they, have, they seem to conquer that. So when they come to us after that year, they bring those, uh, those competencies and skills to the classroom so they can organize their time better. They can assess what's going on and respond to it in a, in a, in a better um, way because they have the knowledge to do that. They also have multiple roles and so they, they have to look at time management in order to be successful. When you talk to a successful RN to BSN student, they absolutely are able to say, I'm doing this, I've reduced my clinical hours, I have my time schedule for my teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, the weakness that's is a strength. That's, that's, a, a, real that's a real strength. strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The weakness, the, the, the weaknesses <clears throat> that we see are uh, probably in their ability to do critical research, mm -hmm. uh, lit reviews, uh, mm -hmm. using the, uh, the, the facilities that we have to search out information that they need and then writing mm -hmm. um, because writing we teach people to abbreviate everything that they annotate or write in a hospital setting and then we bring them into an academic setting and at the baccalaureate level the competency of communication with both written uh, and oral communication are key to success mm -hmm. most of them do not have a problem with articulating orally, but they do have a problem with the written media. So all of the programs that I've been associated with use writing seminars, writing courses, support services, so that we help the student to become successful over mm -hmm. the time they spend in the program. Mm -hmm. I see. I, I agree with that. I think the writing part is mm -hmm. probably a little more difficult, and I think that might even be one of the reasons that people don't go on. <laughs> I really feel Perhaps. that way. Perhaps. But I think uh, your students and other students should know that there's plenty of help. And it's, yeah. just, it's just a skill to be mastered like anything else that they've done in their ADM program. But I think it is difficult for nurses who don't write a lot to come into a classroom where we're asking them to expand yes. their writing. Yes. Um, so that, that is a little bit of a challenge. I hope that that doesn't overshadow what the primary purpose is, mm -hmm. and that's when you're a baccalaureate prepared nurse or you're a professional nurse, you're going to be asked to communicate that way. Mm -hmm. And to build those skills and be able to practice that is really a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. I know when, as an associate degree nurse, um, and when I was a young nurse, you always wondered why things happened and you didn't know why they happened or you know how they how they got there um, this is an op opportunity mm -hmm. when you have a little higher education you'll be invited mm -hmm. to be part of those those changes and you want to be ready mm -hmm. able to write what you feel and be able to orally present mm -hmm. a position mm -hmm. and our ADM programs we're working on just becoming a nurse. Yes. That's you know yes. the primary the primary goal, yeah. and uh, I think uh, you can't do everything in two years. And yes. this just helps put yes. that piece on yeah. it. I think. Well, and I um, I appreciate the um, the advice to not <clears throat> uh, see that as an impediment or an obstacle no. to to educational progression. It That's, it just uh, shouldn't be. But I've heard yeah. a lot of yes. I, um, how many papers will I have yeah. to write if I come to your program? <laughs> That's actually one of the first questions yeah. that we hear. Oh, is that right? And when I do the academic advisement, when they're coming <laughs> mm -hmm. into the program, they'll say to me, do we have to write a lot? And, uh, and I'll say that our courses, we do quizzes, but we really emphasize the mm -hmm. written word. Uh -huh. But we have support services. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you look at all of the universities statewide, Courses now have what they call a W designation. Mm -hmm. And the W designation is considered to be a course that emphasizes writing 
at the undergraduate level. So mm. all programs, not only nursing, are trying to capitalize on people's ability to write. Mm -hmm. They also have courses that have a cue next to them, which means they're, they're not writing courses, they're quantitative courses. Mm. And so we have to help people to gain the knowledge that they need so that they can look at information that might be quantitative and they can analyze it the way mm -hmm. they want to analyze it. And that's one of the things that you get in a, a liberal arts education, mm -hmm. is the ability to communicate, the ability to analyze, and so I, I think that I tell students, don't really be worried. We have gurus on campus. <laughs> Sue is probably one of our best writers. Mm -hmm. And every campus has great writing centers to support the students. Mm -hmm. So I think that people shouldn't al be alarmed mm -hmm. when they're told that the emphasis is on writing and presenting. Mm -hmm. um, once yes. they come through the program, uh, they get, become much more comfortable with themselves and with mm -hmm. those skills. Mm -hmm. And feel, when you said, what does the individual acquire as a result of the baccalaureate nurse? They feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so, so much of an internal gratification that what I was afraid of, I have conquered mm -hmm. and I can move forward. Mm -hmm. One very real obstacle to many uh, graduates is the financial mm -hmm. uh, obligation of continuing education. Right. I wonder, um, Mary Jane, if you can address <coughs> cost and any advice you might have about financial resources. Cost is an issue. Mm -hmm. And in this economy, <coughs> cost has become an even a bigger issue. Um, we try and work with the students so that we develop a program where they can uh, really make the best of the resources that they have. So we will tell them you know, how to take their courses, where to take their courses. We work our program as a part-time program, but students qualify for financial aid as they do in all the state systems if they mm -hmm. are taking six credits. And there seems that now at the national level there's going to be a little bit of an easement on the financial aid for students who are taking six credits or more. We also tell students to look for scholarships that are available that are going un or underutilized, mm -hmm. especially scholarships for underrepresented individuals nationally. Nursing is trying to um, create a workforce that looks more like the population that we're caring for. Mm -hmm. And so the emphasis has now been on underrepresented populations. So that is a place to look for for funding. Uh, schools also have individual endowments or individual scholarships which students can apply for. Many students have hesitated to apply for that, those uh, scholarships because they felt that their income would exclude them, but some of the scholarships are not income-based. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is to look at their organization's reimbursement policies. Many of the organizations have reimbursement. Now we know that's also an issue that's very controversial right now, but there are some institutions in the state of Connecticut that will pay up to $5,000 a year in tuition reimbursement and they will pay up front for people to go to school. So I would say you should select your program, find out what that program has to offer for scholarships, find out what your, your uh, organization that you're employed with has for reimbursement, and then go from, from there. Um, it costs probably on an average of between ten and fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars to do the core courses in a nursing program mm -hmm. in the private sector right now. Um, mm -hmm. okay. And that's nearly the same in the pub at the at public, public mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. Too, there's. I think a that's higher. yeah. There, they might <coughs> even be a little higher. Yeah. I think sometimes we think, you know, one will be yes. um, less expensive than the other, but I haven't seen that. They mm -hmm. all seem to be running in uh -huh. somewhere in that range. I see. I think the state might be even a little higher per credit than some of the privates. Uh -huh. And like Mary Jane said before, some have different residency requirements. Yes. So that's why it's good to yes. sit down with a counselor yeah. and um, when you're looking for jobs, look at that benefit, which I think sometimes mm -hmm. we don't look at benefits mm -hmm. when we're looking for that first mm -hmm. job. Yes. So that would be one thing that you would wanna, want to look at. And then looking at the common courses, 
that you know would be accepted anywhere mm -hmm. to take in the meantime before you, you know, right. make the full commitment yes. to matriculation. Yes. So, yeah. I know we've been talking <clears throat> this morning about um, the RN to BSN program, um, but we have many students who already hold a Bachelor mm -hmm. of Arts or Science and BA or BS mm -hmm. in another discipline. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have to them um, regarding their continuation beyond the associate degree in nursing education? Oh, go for your master's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say they should look at. They need to decide. Hmm. Uh, the, the issue mm -hmm. that the new RN has, regardless of whether they have a baccalaureate degree or not, is they do not know what specialty they want to move into. Mm -hmm. So the new RN with a bachelor's degree needs to pick a practice area and to see, first of all, to build up their practice ability, mm -hmm. but then also to decide what focus they want when they move into graduate education. Mm -hmm. And so most schools that offer master's programs ask for at least one year of practice mm -hmm. before you move on. In Connecticut, if you have a bachelor's degree, not in nursing, almost every single program has core competencies which they ask you to justify or to complete before you move into the master's program. And those core competencies are the public health, community public mm -hmm. health, a, a total head-to-toe -to -toe assessment, research statistics that goes mm -hmm. with the research and statistics, mm -hmm. and a um, leadership. Pardon? Leadership. And right? a leadership Very course. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they feel are those core issues that everybody needs. And then you pick your master's program. Mm -hmm. And there's such a difference between master's programs. Um, they, th I really always tell the student, you need to decide first. Mm -hmm. What I, where I, where I want to work and if I want to specialize. Because as we know, the bachelor's is a generalist, mm -hmm. the master's is a specialty degree, and mm -hmm. the PhD is a research degree, mm -hmm. uh, the doctoral level. So they have to know where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And I, we, I spend a lot of time with uh, nurses who are moving on and already have a degree talking about what areas are open to them. And I feel that that's another uh, thing that we need to provide in the state of Connecticut is we need to talk openly to students. Do you want to be involved in education? Do you want to be in advanced practice? Mm -hmm. You know, do you want to do anesthesia? What role do you want to have for your next degree? Mm -hmm. And what are those role requirements? What are the issues related to that role? What type of education do you need? Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite uh, important that they again do yeah. career counseling. Right, yeah. exactly. Yes, with some really some intentional planning and uh, uh, some very strong and accurate advice That's um, right. with career counseling. Yeah. The, the only um, thing I'm going to add to that is <coughs> nursing historically um, they will do that, go into their practice area to become expert in that practice area, um, but we stay there too long before oh, we go on to to get that further degree and that's where nursing falls down a little bit in comparison yes. to other professions because we're we're um, older when we get these master's degrees right. and the doctoral degrees and therefore we're only looking at I think it's still just 10 percent of mm -hmm. nurses who can actually get there at the masters and less than one percent at the doctoral level mm -hmm. and that's uh, that skill mix that you were talking about that's um, made it very challenging for mm -hmm. nursing we don't have the the right people in the right places right. in the pipeline yes yes Sue is absolutely right. do it earlier <laughs> really <laughs> the old take it from me <laughs> yeah. but the old adage is so it, it's so important the old adage you know get your experience work come to us clinically competent is just not what we should be telling mm -hmm. new right. young practitioners. We should be telling them, go back to school and mm -hmm. get your education, and you can work along the way. Yeah, that's right. And mm -hmm. as you work along Alongside. the way, you'll get your clinical expertise because mm -hmm. we want educators who bring to the table mm -hmm. clinical competence as well mm -hmm. as the competence in educational pedagogy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a great mix. Mm -hmm. People entering nursing today in the state of Connecticut the mean age is 34 years. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. much, wow. that's, that's on, and that's with an associate degree. Mm -hmm. So by the time they get a baccalaureate and a master's and they're in their mid-40s and they're never moving <coughs> on for a doctorate, mm -hmm. 
we need to take the 22-year-olds and the 23-year-olds and the 24-year-olds and say, move now. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you won't. Mm -hmm. Or if you do, you'll do it at 50. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have time to build your own practice around your mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. So I think it's extremely important that mm -hmm. we guide people to move on in their education. Mm -hmm. Sue's right yes, on target. Yes. Well, I think we can <clears throat> take heart from the state that uh, this and many other states have worked very hard on articulation mm -hmm. models mm -hmm. that really promote that, uh, that continuation yes. in, in a prompt manner uh, yes. without loss of uh, any credits and, and so on. Yeah, and, we're and very expedite. fortunate we are. there. Really I don't are. know that every state no, is I, as advanced, flexible and mm -hmm. as advanced exactly mm -hmm. as we are. And, um, yeah. That's, that's a real yes. gift, I yes. think, in I Connecticut agree. for our nurses. Um, before we leave, I'd uh, like to uh, open up any uh, further comment that you might like to add um, to our discussion. I think we've really, you know, addressed our topic very well. Mm -hmm. I, if, I uh, just wanted to have an opportunity for you to uh, explore any other area that you felt was important. Well, I know the people who are watching this film are probably yes. just about to go out there, so yes. I want to congratulate, oh, you know, the you. new nurses who are coming <laughs> mm -hmm. out. And, um, you know, just little by little, always yes. keeping it in your mind, I think, is the most important thing. Education and practice, yes. education and practice, yes. um, as, uh, as opposed to doing it the other way, yes. I think. Um, keeps us mindful yeah. of what's good for not only us as people, but the profession yes. as well. Yeah. Well, I thank you. On behalf of the students and faculty, I want to thank you so much for your contributions today. Uh, you've given us great insight into this topic. You've explored some of the unique challenges that our students face mm -hmm. and uh, given us much food for thought for our individual students who are contemplating continuation and have um, you know, uh, many uh, variables to juggle. And you've helped mm -hmm. us sort through that. Great. So on behalf of the students and faculty, I thank you. Oh, listen, thank, thank you. you. It's interesting. Okay. I think this is the best.